Let's do it. Let's do this. Shall we? Shall we chat? With no more further ado, uh, how the future can be ours. America. Hashtag America. Hashtag epic. Hashtag so true. Five new conservative policies to take our country back. And it opens with a clip of the Joker. Awesome. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Off to a good start, indeed. Come on. That's right, John. Kiss your sister. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. It is good to be back. New studio Ooh. mode activated. Content. Whoa! He is, he's gone full soil mode. Oh, bro. He's got the soy redditor beard and everything. Oh my God. Oh, his room sucks. This sign sucks. His room is worse than before, but it still has the shitty walls. So what did he actually change? He was gone for like two months. What the fuck? Oh my God, his stupid thing at the front. Oh yeah, here, look. Going their own you can't, way. You can't, yeah, I think he's in MGTOW now. Uh, the future is... Male, the future is male. Uh oh, looks like looks like John Doyle is the one who doesn't believe that that women should be able to get pregnant. He he believes that he wants that M preg. That's what he wants. Mode activated. We're very excited about it. I hope you are as well. And we're still fine tuning everything as far as the shots and the lights and the audio goes, all that stuff. So this probably isn't the ultimate and optimal setup for the new studio, but we'll get we'll get it locked down as we go along. We'll make it better. This is not even my final Look, form. I'm sorry. And such was the case with I'm the last. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Pause it. I'm doing pause Andy already. Listen. No matter how long of a beard this guy grows, he will never stop looking like a tiny boy. I think he's going to be an 80-year-old man, and he's going to look like Benjamin Button. He's, he's like um, Report of the Week, but less wholesome. Yeah, he's like an uglier Report of the Week. Hey, thank you very much for the Tier 1 sub 10-minute lungs. Thank you very much for the $5 Morg Porg. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. He'll bald by 30. I don't think it'll matter. He'll just look like a baby. <laughs> like, babies don't have hair. He's going to look like a baby at 30. It's just I'm calling it studio as well so we anticipated this but the problem is that very few others will take this into account so got to get used to the new setup got to tweak the colors and the lights and the angles and stuff as we go along maybe one day we'll even unlock camera three the forbidden angle who knows but anyways we're going to get into this list here and i do have to say that i've enjoyed the time off i said he I, no 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 i said review bra, bra was hotter than john doyle i wasn't hating on review bra, review bra is cute. yeah review bra is cute because it's allowed for things to sort of oh, uh, no. like ferment intellectually. And I'd estimate that I probably got about 9% smarter in the time off, so that's cool. And I'll explain my absence at the end of the video so that we can just get right into it now. But just know, just rest assured that there is a method to my madness. The HOC network has expanded to be larger than ever before. We have people everywhere. We have them in media and government and local government, and we have their attention. We are literally the heck off communist octopus, just have our tentacles everywhere, which of course is necessary because we're trying to shift our country in the right direction. And to what? do that, we need to have the attention of powerful people what? along with the force making so wait so he's stalin so and he's stalin that's going to get into the is that what he's saying he's stalin is what he's trying to say first I'm thing that i want to talk about before we get into the list which is institutional power the necessity and urgency of institutional power i'm going to monologue about that for a bit here and then we'll get into the list of five policies that i've aggregated we're actually we're going to do 10 of them at first but it's been a while so we're okay. going to have to micro i gotta John say another thing he's out of focus this sucks for him but he's out of focus. Look at how soft this focus is. This is in HD, and he's fucking out of focus. Fucking loser. And he's not doing this live. This is a fucking pre-recorded show. How did they not catch that? So, ugh. The focus is on Jesus? Is that intentional? I just think he's stupid. Oil. But some of them might confuse you, some of them you might disagree with, but I will explain why. They are absolutely imperative, and some of them are even uh, below the radar to where we could probably get these into the mainstream discussion and even enacted in certain states within like the next two years. But first, we must address the elephant in the room, which is that Father's Day is right around the corner. And we all know that dads are very difficult to shop for because male nature typically dictates that if we want something, we just go get it. So every year, you're <laughs> panicking like... <laughs> Male nature, male nature. Hey, I club thing on head. No thinky. <laughs> it's 
silent silent says no it wasn't intentional it's just that the bobblehead looks more like an adult human an adult an adult human <laughs> all right i like it i like it Good what one. do I get for my dad? I understand this frustration. I do. When I shop for the women in my life, my gifts are so good. I make them cry. They collapse to the ground. The, the concoction of thoughtfulness, joy, surprise, presentation, it's literally too much for their brains to handle. The last gift that John Doyle made a woman cry with was his own, his own fucking foreskin. He probably was just like, <laughs> I make women cry with my gifts all the time. They love it. Here's my cum jar. I, this, is, this was from when I held in my cum for 13 months so they just start short-circuiting but with dads it's like what does this man want that he doesn't already have I'll tell you what he wants he wants things that exist as accessories to things that he already has your mom has dreams of learning to play the violin and, and so seems to sing. men just let me let me get it straight from John Doyle here men just want to accessorize that's what he wants he's saying men they love accessories listen the one thing I know about manly men is they love to accessorize okay thank you John Doyle thank you for reminding me of the truth not your dad your dad doesn't want you to give him a new hobby for father's day because then it's not a gift it is a chore let him do his own thing help out if you can and given the events of the last 18 months and frankly the last decade or so i would wager that your dad is one of the nearly five million new gun owners and maybe even lives in one of the half of states in this country signing constitutional carry into law and so i must point out to you that one company has emerged as the leader in everyday carry and that is we the people holsters we the people holsters are 100 percent american made and custom molded to fit your exact firearm for a quick Smooth draw. With hepa play. With hepa play hosted. Oh, oh my god. god. He's got a fucking love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my god. I'm, I'm With loving thousands it. of options to choose from, plus a selection of custom printed holsters. Oh, you, are you can even you can even get it. You can get them customized. Are you serious? Sure to find just the right fit for your it. lifestyle, plus their proprietary so clip allows cool. you to customize oh the cans God. and ride for a comfortable fit you can wear all day. But that's not all. Well, plug my butt and call me Charlie. Check out their complete line of patriotic shirts. Listen, if you don't think those are cute, that's between you and the moon, sister. They're 100% American-made tactical gun belt with the proprietary talent buckle and premium line of bacon jerky. Go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle right now. Get an additional $10 off with the offer code Doyle at checkout. Every holster comes with a lifetime guarantee. If it's not a perfect fit, send it back for a full refund. It's not even a big deal. Wethepeopleholsters.com. That is wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Promo code Doyle. Very epic. Anyways, we are less than a year into the buy. Nah, Doyle. You don't get to do a self-plug without me doing a self-plug. If you're here and you're liking the show, if you're laughing, if you're coming, if you're whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that you slam that motherfucking subscribe button. Just click through on the video. Yeah, look, Fawn tells you to subscribe. You subscribe. Yeah, you got to subscribe. And make sure that you like it. And join the goddamn Discord. Share, All know. right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Trying to hold on a minute. You're getting ahead of yourself. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. Get over here and at least do the plug. If you're going to plug it, plug it. You plug it. I'm not plugging it. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping back. You plug it. Oh. You gotta, you gotta subscribe to Mama and hit like and hit retweet and hit the little heart button. And hit all the thumbs up buttons. You gotta tell all your friends. You Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Yeah, especially it's right that. there. You're not gonna say anything cool about the Discord. The Discord tell, is wait, cool. Wait, wait, report. Cool people in re it. Report real quick on the on the state of memes on the Discord. The memes on the Discord pretty goddamn good, aren't they? Aren't they? Uh, uh not your. Well, you're you're you like. All right, never mind. Don't listen to Fawn. Fawn's gonna undersell the memes. The memes is great, okay? They're listen. good. They're get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're no. not. You're underselling the show. Get out of no. here. Get the hell out of here. What the fuck? God damn. It's getting undercut on my own show. Excuse me. The Discord's great. Discord.gg forward slash Demon Mama. Join it. Administration and things are getting much worse at a much quicker pace than we anticipated. Well, oh, totally, dude. I don't need to remind you. Inflation, gas prices, housing bubble, censorship, targeting political opposition with federal police, etc. The point being that if you are tired of losing and you actually care about your country, <laughs> then you need to understand and be comfortable with. If the you're tired of constantly losing, like I am knowledge that we are going to have to break free from the fake conservatism of the last several decades that got us here in the first place it does not make any sense to continue to run the same plays that have literally never worked for you at any point obviously and so as we get into some of these policies you might think to yourself well now wait a minute well that doesn't sound very conservative to me oh the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result 
And there are two things that I will say to that. Firstly, conservatism properly understood is simply that which conserves the traditional American society. That is the ends. It is not an allegiance to abstract principles or means. It is an allegiance to the ends, to actually conserving something. And in case you need a reminder, we have failed to conserve anything. Oh, oh it's so bad. The second angle is even worse. Oh no, how did he manage to make the side angle even worse? Dude, why do you do a lower side angle? It is in focus. Okay, credit where credit is due, it's in focus. At least this idiot got it in focus. But what is this angle? This looks like, you know what this reminds me of? I'm sorry, I have to do this. Here you go. Here you go. I'm sorry, I have to do this. I have to do it. I gotta do it to you. I'm sorry, I have to do it to you. Here we go, it's this. It's this, everybody. You know, you know what time this it is. This must be Brian Butterfield six months ago before starting my diet plan. But just look at me now. I feel like a new man thanks to the Butterfield diet. The results have been incredible. No one here. Oh, sorry. The results have been incredible. Okay. That's that. It's that part right there. That specific part. The results have been incredible. No, I'm over here. The results have been incredible. Actually, <laughs> any issue in the last 80 years. I therefore reject any input from neoconservatives who don't get it yet or who don't have the intellectual capacity to ever get it because frankly, I understand what's happening. I understand why it's happening. I understand wait, who's wait. behind it. Neoconservatives, you mean the guys who were literally alive during the time that you're talking about that you want to go back to? You weren't alive then. The neocons were alive then. What are you talking about? I've done the reading, and that's the difference. Lots of people can only conceptualize conservatism in terms of what they've heard on talk radio or cable television or whatever. And so given that, let me ask you this, and this is the second thing. Why do you think that you were allowed to hear that? And I'm not saying that these people are necessarily bad people or that they sold out or something, but why would the system allow for anything that would pose a challenge to it to be broadcast in mass? Notice how they only started censoring people once there was a legitimate effort to push back against the system, once we had a candidate who was actually a threat to the establishment in this country, to the swamp, to the oh, deep yeah. state. Oh, yeah, oh, he's a so total to threat. Oh, Donald Trump, total threat. That's why he's still president right now, right? Total threat to the establishment. He completely destroyed everything we know of as, as the establishment. They call themselves neocons, but they are actually old. <laughs> Checkmate, atheists, I guess. Meaning patriots out there, all the good people out there who just want us to return to a libertarian society just like the founding fathers wanted. I understand that and I sympathize with that, but we need to understand that it is literally the same thought process as, well, that wasn't true communism. Well, this time we'll get it right. And it's like, well, that wasn't true small government conservatism. This time we'll get it right because the reality of the situation Isn't that is what that you're doing right now. Right now we're not suffering from the consequences of inauthentic conservatism, but rather we are suffering from the consequences of what we regard to be actual conservatism, which exists to distract and drain time and money from well-meaning patriots who actually care about this country. These people do not play to win, they play for lobbying contracts. Virtually everything that they do is performative, it is not real. Conservatism right. has existed Hold in on, can I listen to that again? Can we double that back? I think he literally just said that he's a fake. Hold on. And drain time and money from Hold regard on consequences of inauthentic conservatism but rather we are suffering from the consequences of what we regard to be actual conservatism we are suffering the consequences of what we call actual conservatism he just fucked up he just completely fucked the, up this entire segment he's saying that conservatism wastes everybody's time and and gets sold out which exists to distract and drain time and money from well-meaning patriots who actually care about this country. These people do not play to win, they play for lobbying contracts. What? Virtually everything that they do is performative. Am I wrong? Real. Did I just hear him wrong? ...has existed in this country is basically a form of controlled opposition which seeks to criticize, mock, and most irresponsibly and dangerously occupy crucial volume and resources without actually doing anything to push back against the left. It is all performative. Take the recent issue. Transgender girls competing in women's sports. Biological men competing in women's sports. Here we go. We just talked about this earlier today. Sports. It's ridiculous. The left have absolutely lost their minds, folks. How can oh, totally. men compete in women's sports? 
it's not fair to all of our female athletes. What a great argument. Bell? We're familiar with the talking points. Let me ask you a question now. How exactly is your day-to-day -day affected by the collapse of the institution of women's athletics? This is not to say that biological men should be allowed to compete in women's sports. And actually, don't even call them <laughs> biological men. That's just ceding more ground to the left rhetorically. Why would we need to use biologically as a modifier on the word man? Just say men. But yeah, this is not to say that men should be allowed to compete in women's sports. <laughs> this is simply to say that the whole Fail! issue... This dude is such a spineless coward. He can't even make his argument without a hundred different fucking considerations. There's like 15 stars on there. Oh my God. Totally performative. I quite frankly cannot think of a less important, less consequential noun on American soil than women's sports. Oh, well, the young girls won't get as many trophies <laughs> now because they have to compete. Why do you care about women's sports? You, they shouldn't exist at all. Oh my God. Does he think this is going to sell? <laughs> is, does he think this is where the future of the right is? Dude. Against transgender girls. Hell yeah, that's male excellence right there. Let's go, boys. But seriously, no, I understand the problem. I understand the concerns. I understand the importance of athletics and competition. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he's trying. He's but arguing for a mass the discussion drop. in itself is not a serious discussion. The issue of boys with gender identity disorder competing in women's sports is about 10 years downstream of the actual problem, which is that we as a country are entertaining the idea that gender, sex, biology, hormones, it's all unimportant. It's all insignificant. And so what I'll say is this. Yes, I believe that men should be prohibited from participating in women's sports. Absolutely. But I also believe that propagating gender theory and its adjacent strains should be prohibited in any institution receiving public dollars. Because if you don't do that, then you're just going to end up right back there anyways. As it would turn out, there's no such thing as, well, we just want to be free to do what we want in the privacy of our own home. That was a lie. The slippery slope exists. And if you think that you can deal with something down the mountain without shutting off the water at the top of the mountain, slope. then you are not a serious person. I'm slippery slope. I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I'm slipping. You are not having a serious discussion. And this is the fundamental problem with the practical application of libertarianism. The problem isn't necessarily the ideas, but rather that our current context he is, does not allow- He's going hard off. He's gonna say he's a fascist by the end of this. Oh my God. Those ideas. Oh my God. The society the founding fathers wanted, however you'd like to describe it, it is not possible unless the society is a unified moral and religious people. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, said this. If you are going to opt to live and let live, to not seize power, to maintain the power vacuum, then the other people have to agree to do this as well. But the reality of our situation is that the people in our country now, the communists, they don't no, want to leave No, he was not already an, o an open fascist. I mean, it's obvious that he is, but he was not an open fascist on the table they want to take it for themselves and use it against you this is not debatable they openly admit this and so the problem with this small government conservatism that we've all been sold aka the don't do anything because then you're just like the enemy who is winning by the way conservatism <laughs> the problem isn't that it's a bad idea on paper just that it's only possible if those forces who seek to destroy that society are are suppressed because if you allow that fire to sustain itself it will spread and before you know it it'll be too late to stop it the founding fathers knew this we knew this before the neoconservatives co-opted the American right and made it into an impotent embarrassment. General Patton, General MacArthur, all of the greatest Americans that you and I could think of, they all knew this. And so I would make the argument that it is time for the libertarian types to join forces with us to follow the logical conclusion of the NAP, of the Gadsden flag, to understand that what they're doing to this country is an act of aggression that will destroy it if you don't do anything about it. And that they are literally, this is raw fascism right here. This is literally raw fascism just just so you know look even if he doesn't call it fascism this is what fascism sounds like we need to get everybody on the same side so that we can seize power and wield power this is just straight up fascism we need a big strong government to keep these degenerates in line this is raw fascism just so you know this is what it sounds like i want imps please listen to this you have heard it. You now know what it sounds like. Treading on you, and it is time to fight back. It is time to bite them. We have to gain institutional power. We have to wield it. But the response is always, well, but if we use the government, won't they just use it back? Understand, it is already being used against you. The corporations are being used against you. That means worst case scenario, even according to you, and better believe it, you've done the math. We're just going to be back to square one. And so given that, and given that I'd actually like to be able to raise a family here someday, I've concluded that we may as well give it the old college try, right? Let's you would have to get a girl to have sex with you first. And I don't think that's going to happen, given that I think that you're the type of person who has to stop washing their balls. Because if you touch your balls, you'll come because you have been doing fucking no jerk for the last three years. So good luck, buddy.
Let's actually have some balls. Let's have a competent right-wing government for the first time in decades and frankly, probably ever. Because if we lose, we are going to be regarded as the greatest, most impressively pathetic group of people to ever exist. That we let our country be destroyed by communists. Literal communists who masturbate to cartoon animals because we were too comfortable. <laughs> yep, that's what gives us our strength, buddy. That's why we're strong. We can do what you can't watching Netflix and browsing TikTok, blowing the home court advantage to literal communist perverts. That will be the biggest true, out in the history of True, buddy! That's true! You are, because you're lame. Because communist perverts are cooler. You're stupid. You're boring. No one likes you, and you don't wash your balls. Kind. And so the last thing I'll say about this before we get into the list is that the reason we used to be a much happier, much more unified, much more free country isn't because that was just like the natural state of our existence. It's because to be a communist 100 years ago was almost exactly what it's like to be a right-wing person now in 2021. It's almost one-to-one. -one. And when I say communist, I'm speaking broadly uh, oh, about the coalition to which all oh, of these interest totally, groups are ultimately serving. Totally, dude. They're anti-American, they're anti-family, they're anti-God, they're anti-white, they're degenerate, etc. And actually, on that note, Another important thing that no one talks about, why we were fighting communism. The fight against communism, it wasn't about wanting to be able to, like, you know, run to Walmart at 11 p.m., get a pint of Ben and & Jerry's. And hey, how do you think he found that picture? How do you think he found that picture of the sexy, yiffing, uh, communist red fox? What do you think he had to do to find that picture? phone charger no it actually had very little to do with capitalism it was about the soul of the nation it was about the fact that communists were godless and we knew that and we knew that without god we would decay into basically where we are now there's a reason that we mandated that in god we trust be inscribed on our currency in 1955 your grandparents probably saw that change happen and it wasn't because we loved capitalism and consumption though the irony is that as we've actually, lost god and we've become decadent and actually greedy, actually it was my friend actually it was and the money that we so idolize still has that inscription that's beside the point the point is that if you showed an American man in the 1950s what his country would become within the next 100 years, he'd want to go back to the drawing board. But anyways, think about that. That's because he's weak. That's because he's weak, John. The reason why a 1950s man would look into the future and scream and piss himself is because he was weak. He wasn't ready for what we were going to bring. The next stage of humanity, a queer future that will leave you behind. And you'll want it. You'll be sitting there like a like a like a child with their their grubby hands on the window of a local bakery, looking in at all of us enjoying ourselves and living freely. And you'll be sitting there outside, going, "They can't keep getting away with it. They can't keep getting away with it. They can't keep getting away with it." And we'll be having a good time with our communist fox boys. It's going to be great. Why were you never taught about how we used to treat communists the same way that they now treat right-wing people? It's because that is what is necessary to defeat them and actually conserve and protect the nation. They don't want that. They like it when you think that- Do you hear what he's arguing for? He's arguing for purges. I'm not kidding you. Think about the words that he's actually saying. He's saying you need to repress and eliminate these people. You need to throw them in prison. This is a guy sitting on YouTube on his fucking shitty little gamer chair on his shitty little masturbation station and talking about how he wants purges. This motherfucker. This little weak, limp-wristed, closeted gay motherfucker is trying to tell you that he wants purges. You have principles. I'm going to beat you in the marketplace of ideas. Which, by the way, they'll just kick you out of anyways because what did I say? the left can act with what total impunity because they have virtually all of the institutional <clears throat> power and you have none of it. hundred years ago, we used to target communists in the, in the government, in academia, in the media. You would be fired, blacklisted, maybe even charged. Now look where we are. Wow. What a great what a great time that was. That was a really successful policy, wasn't it, dude? Tables have turned. By the 1960s, they had taken over academia. By the 2000s, right-wing thought was non-existent. By the 2010s, 2010s, any student or faculty who dissented would be targeted. You will be made to conform. They did the same thing with similar timelines in public education, big business, media, Hollywood, etc. And so, we do I think he's actually closeted? I think there's a good chance of it. I I'm just gonna say I'm gonna guess. Listen, I've got the guy made a, a three-hour video about quitting porn. I have a feeling this guy doesn't just watch your fucking vanilla porn. I'm sorry, it's just a guess but there's a lot to say there, okay? We have no idea how to push back. We are fish 
in a barrel. There are no right-wing organizations dedicated to getting individuals to strategize and infiltrate these apparatuses to take them back, partially because we're too busy raising $100,000 to totally own AOC because we act like literal children. We have no right-wing George Soros. We don't even have our military anymore. Side note, do not join the military. Maybe I'll do a video on that later. But think about this. They're in such firm control over True, you that they can commit dog. legitimate acts True. of violence and terrorism. And it will either be ignored or romanticized by the mainstream narrative. But if you listen to federal police when they tell you that you can enter a building as long as you don't break anything, they will arrest you and write the history books to compare you to the 9-11 hijackers. And so we essentially have two options. Occupy a power structure or die. Like, literally die. And probably the only way to go about this is to do the same thing. That they then die. They did. We need to have our own long march through the institutions. We need tens of thousands of disciplined. High we need the long march through the institutions. This guy is literally advocating for violence. Like, I'm not kidding you. This guy is advocating for violence right now. He's literally arguing for purges in this fucking argument. This is the this is not mask coming off. This is the mask being obliterated into dust. Yeah, I wonder how he is still on YouTube. Huh. Huh. I really wonder how while he is at at 1312 in the video at, that he is still on YouTube despite advocating for pur for purges of government. Huh. How strange. On his video that's titled Five New Conservative Policies to Take Our Country Back, even though he hasn't listed any policies, which is weird. He does these video titles that don't actually refer to a list. Such a, such a strange mystery that he can get away at timestamp 1312 in the video five new conservative policies to take our country back that john doyle is literally advocating for violent purges of the of the u.s government very strange isn't it super focused patient highly motivated individuals also to anyone thinking well but how do you know your ideas are correct what if you're wrong and communism's actually correct and better i don't even know how to answer that like, like am i supposed True, to because you're not stupid. be confident in my beliefs having because done you don't have any arguments do you think it's dude. possible for us to know right from wrong do you need to see my math can i show you a picture of what the other side looks like because honestly that's like the most compelling argument at this point what? but simply put what the right what tends to be more correct because our thinking is fundamentally he, rooted you know in he took a vacation and he still got dry mouth <sighs> he's still doing the gasping and the swallowing from before. This has been like months since we last watched this video. Reality in nature, and the left tends to be more incorrect because their thinking is fundamentally rooted in idealism. It's, it's literally like a rejection of reality in nature. But here's the sobering truth, and I wish this weren't the case, but everything throughout history suggests that it is, which is that it's not enough to just be right. You have to have the power to disseminate that truth because people aren't that smart. They're basically Still lemmings. parched. Don't believe me? Still think the best ideas win? Okay, why do so many people all of a sudden think that gender doesn't exist anymore? Because the people who control the narratives told them so. No one thinks that gender doesn't exist anymore. Although that would be pog if it didn't. That would be super pog if it didn't, but no one says that. Like, what are you talking about? People need to think for themselves, but they don't. We know what's right. We know what Wait. works. Wait, hold on. Thinking, hold on, let me get this straight in John Doyle's mind. Not thinking for yourself is challenging the existing structures, but thinking for yourself is blindly obeying the structures that existed before. Thinking for yourself is obeying everything that you're told. Not thinking for yourself is challenging the structures. Interesting. An interesting dichotomy you have here. And we know that we need to trust ourselves to communicate that. The reason this country used to be better wasn't because of freedom and small government. It's because the people who were controlling the narratives weren't evil yet. Like, there has always been narrative control. There always will be. It is inevitable. We have to make the choice as to whether we take action to be the ones controlling it so that we can take our country back. Plus, we have God on our side, which is epic. But that being said, here's what scares me. <laughs> Plus, we have God on our side, which is totally epic, dude. <laughs> God. <laughs> in order to do this successfully, it would take about a century, literally. I'm sorry. And that's about I'm how so long it took us to get here in the first place anyways. But what that means is oh. that the people who get the ball rolling on this are very likely not going to live to see the results of their work. And it also means that people are going to generally have, have the to work very hard God at this and make sacrifices. And, and there are a few pretty side. significant impediments that we're going to face that the communists didn't have to face at the time, um, which are going to make this substantially more difficult for us. The first one is that our time preference and focus have been destroyed as a consequence of capitalism, technology, the industrial revolution, etc. Our ability to focus, like our the attention span, the industrial revolution. 
Oh no! Oh, he's a primitivist! Oh my god, he's going prim! He's going fash prim! Prim primitive fascism! Oh! I'm so here for it! I'm so here for the return to monkey arc! Oh my god, industrial revolution bad! He says, sitting in front of a computer been crippled by these things especially in younger people we can't focus we can't delay gratification we want more products new products new information new stimuli new dopamine now and that's a huge problem because literally our biological capacity to do something like an institutional march has been compromised by the way our society has been structured it an is now institutional march what does that mean i want to know what an institutional march means do you think he means an institutional death march you think that's what he means when he says institutional march? Because that's sure what it sounds like to me. That sure sounds like what he's been advocating for this entire time. A less likely than it would have been a century ago for a group of people to have the requisite focus and time preference, etc., that is necessary for something like this to be successful. Not even as an indictment of their own character, but just because of the way society has become structured. It breeds this in people. Our society breeds mental illness, but we don't address that. Instead, we just give you your pills to make you feel like a zombie, but we're making progress, I guess, because at least Blue's Clues is pro-LGBT now. True. And that's a problem, too, because people are depressed. Loser. They have no motivation. Loser. No You've lost. You've lost the culture war, and you're never going to get it back. Your kind, you dinosaurs, are done for. You failed to adapt. You failed to evolve. You are the weaker beings. You lost. You lost even Blue's Clues. You couldn't even hold on to Blue's Clues, and you're only going to keep losing. You're tired of losing because all you do is lose, and all you will ever do is lose. Ambition. They're getting strung out on drugs. They're committing suicide. They hate themselves. And this collective spiritual illness is literally a breeding ground for leftism. I know I've explained this before, but leftism properly understood is just mass mobilized mental illness. And I say that not oh, totally. as a baby boomer, like, oh, oh you guys are crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The dictionary definition of leftism is when you, when you have a bunch of crazy people and they get together because I don't like it. You lost your damn minds, literally because these people are traumatized and they project that insecurity onto these victim narratives and they crystallize them within their identity. That's why half the time you ask these people to defend their political opinions, they just get emotional. They start crying. It's because it's not actually about politics. Dude, this guy's been crying for the entire video. What are you talking about? He's literally gasping and struggling for breath in how worked up he is spiritual sickness and so not only are people just generally less motivated to do anything they're also being bred to fall in line with these narratives and movements and adjacent to this is the abandonment of god the lack of belief in anything greater than themselves so given that why would they want to dedicate themselves to he's rushing he's rushing to finish this video so he can start so he can finally let the tears come <laughs> he's gasping and and he's dry mouth he's got that dry mouth he's shaking he's crying out to god the moment this camera shuts off, you know he's just gonna fill his cup with tears. Taking their country back if they're not gonna live to see the results, you know? Like, well, what's the point? What's in it for them? That's why they humiliate you by disgracing your military, disgracing your flag, putting a clown in the White House. It's a humiliation ritual. They want you to give up on your country. They want you to believe that it's not even worth- Oh, you? Yes, I want John Doyle to give up. Absolutely. I would love it if John Doyle would just lay down and fucking cry. That would make me so goddamn happy because people like you, John Doyle, are the most miserable wretches on this entire planet, incapable of, of enjoying even your comfortable life. You living in the fucking suburbs off your fucking uh, YouTube money and your, your, your right-wing grants, crying every night about how the queers are taking blues clues from us. You people are pathetic. And yes, I would love it if you were made irrelevant forever people like you hold back the entire human race you hold back the entire future and worst of all you hold back your own happiness you're a miserable person all you do in every single video john doyle is cry you cry about how america is gone everything we love is gone look at what they took from us but it's pathetic it's sad it's disgusting beta it's beta shit fighting for anymore and all of these reasons are why when people on the right do discuss a plan to take the country back, it always comes down to this fantasy of a moment of mass awakening. All of a sudden, the left is going to go too far. People are just going to snap out of it. Military is going to drain the swamp. Patriots in control. Trust the plan. No, none of that is going to happen. There is no big moment. There is no mass awakening because to awaken the masses assumes that they're capable of waking up, which they aren't.
Well, he's dispensing with whatever uh, pseudo populism he had. Mm, the people are too stupid. They must be ruled by a lot by a strong fist, a strong fist like mine. My fist is iron. Please ignore the cracking in my voice, the dryness in my mouth. Ignore the cum stains on the bottom of my desk. I am a strong man. I am so strong. I deserve to rule the sheep. I deserve to rule the sheep. Stop fantasizing. Stop coping. Roll up your sleeves. Get to work. The light at the end of the tunnel for us has to be the knowledge that if we do our jobs correctly, then we will have statues erected of us in our honor. We will be revered throughout history. Think about that. If you're watching this right now, if you manage to do your job effectively, whatever that job may be in the struggle, and enough others do the same, you will literally be elevated to the level of the founding fathers in American history a few <laughs> generations. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. If you do your job, if you do your job, if you do your job, you will be elevated to the halls of history. They will make statues of you. You will never be forgotten. You will be remembered like Ben Franklin. You will be remembered like George Washington. You will be remembered. There will be statues of you all over the town. from now and that's the greatest incentive especially for young men assuring them that we will cement their legacy and we will this is why when we take power one of the first things that we'll do is put up statues and memorials across the country of great americans to show oh, that we totally, will honor dude. their efforts in dude their they couldn't even they couldn't even redo the rose garden they couldn't even donald trump couldn't even complete the rose garden what makes you think you're going to be able to get statues of fucking uh, Billy Joe Johnson, who fucking did his who who did his job driving a truck for the for the com for the fucking Nazi revolution. Yeah, okay, dude. Okay, and dude. That's the correct take by the way, with the statues coming down and history being erased. Not that well, they're trying to erase our history, but they're trying to erase it because they don't want it repeating itself. They don't want great Americans to be remembered. Wait, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They don't want it repeating itself. They don't want you to lose the war again. Dude, you, the, the Confederates lost, you moron. You got owned. Fucking General Sherman, my man. Because they don't want to inspire any more great Americans. Because they don't want there to be an America anymore. The greatest gift that you could give to future generations is their birthright, which, frankly, previous generations failed to give you. And that is the United Here, States of America. my birthright! I deserve my Hold birthright! To shamelessly when the birthright the hits. Mode. Speaking of gifts... Have you thought any more about what I said about when Father's the Day? Did you pick a gift yet? Well, you better hits. figure that out now. Because if you don't, you're going to have right. to get him a last-minute gift that you'll try to pass off. I'm so as angry. Here when are we, some actual when we examples lose of the second civil war too. I've given to my dad on various When we lose the second civil war, that's the face you see lording over you when they lose the second. So, oh, yes! We're about Agents. to see the gun squad. Season 3 of Cheers get ready. on DVD. Hey, get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Watch this. And then vaguely have an interest in whatever's printed on this mug. And when you get your dad a tie, you're stuck. And you know, mug, you don't want you want to train in the safety and privacy of their oh, own home. Pop the squat! Pop the tactical squat! Quick! I target was invented to give law-abiding citizens Everybody a cost-effective way to Here train in the safety and privacy Quick, of their the own squat. home. No more inconvenient trips to the range or expensive practice ammunition. Pop Just the squat! I'm ready for the laser bullets! App, load the laser bullet into your firearm and Hold start your training Also, experience. I'm sorry, I Dry know some of you have seen this before. Muscle memory, Hold on. Hold sharpen on. target reactions. I know some of you have seen this before, but I just want you to know, listen, this doesn't work. A bullet doesn't travel like a laser. That is the stupidest shit ever. This is literally, you're getting swindled. If you, I mean, if you want to pop the, the tactical squat, go for it, please. But this is a, a laser bullet. That doesn't even make sense. You will be training yourself incorrectly. You will become, using this product, you will literally become a worse shot. It will make you a worse aim. Actually, you know what? I endorse this product. I, I hereby endorse itargetpro.com all conservatives should purchase itargetpro.com using the offer code soil s o y l at itargetpro.com you should train with it daily and i promise you you will you will be very ready for the rightful conclusion of the civil war too in speed oh, but don't forget to pop the pop the squat you always want to make sure you pop the tactical squat Alignment, trigger function, and more. iTarget Pro comes in all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR, so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. Go to iTargetPro.com and save 10%, yes, plus get correct. free shipping with the offer code DOYLE. This is the smartest way correct. for you to practice, and it pays for itself in one day. That it's is the, the squattiest. Now get it's into the, the smartest way, more like the squattiest way. <laughs>
Oh, here we go. Here's his number five list. Here we go. It's time. We get to get the list finally. Get big tech under control. And I mean seriously under control. When I talk about almost everything that even the most hard-hitting, take-no-BS conservatives do as just performative, it really is true, especially on issues like big tech, which is one of the most important. So we hear about Republicans take action against big tech. Epic win. Libs triggered. Libs on suicide watch. I'm drinking my leftist tears. And you actually look at like what they're doing, the action, like what the action is. Uh, it's legally defining what a social media company is and then saying that if, well, they ban you, well, they have to let you know about it. So I'll lay out some additional things that should be done legally, and then I'll explain why. In addition to just legally defining what a social media company is and mandating that they notify a user when they're banned, how about this? All constitutional free speech is protected on all platforms. Any platform who censors, shadow bans, or deplatforms someone for constitutional... Oh, dude, yeah. You should literally, you should literally be able to, if we're going to have constitutional free speech on all platforms, that's right. That's, that's, that's totally right. You cannot be banned from YouTube, even if you type the word swamp ass, sweaty balls, dick cheese in a line and post it one million times on somebody's po on somebody's video, you should not be able to be banned or removed from that because of your constitutional right to free speech in the public square. Constitutional speech will pay a very large fine each time they do it. Let's say a million dollars because screw these people. And additionally, all previously banned candidates, independent journalists, activists, et cetera, must be reinstated unless the company can prove that their speech wasn't constitutional. And this would also protect current users who haven't been affected yet from the same treatment. Moreover, expand this not only into social media platforms, also internet service providers, telecommunications companies, so that they can't do this anymore either. <sighs> okay, let me, I'm gonna do my best impersonation of a, of a John Doyle video. Guys, the communists are coming for us. The communists are, the fucking communists are coming. Make sure that you buy my laser bullet, b or, um, pop the squat, I target, I squat.com. Modern men just really don't know how to work a dick anymore. And I just, it's just a lot for me to deal with, okay? Sorry, I need a drink. Oh, I'm all out of water. Oh, no. I'm never going to finish this video as it stands. There, that's basically the idea. We would effectively be guaranteeing First Amendment rights At on least the internet, I can fill pop a square. squat. Oh, but John, if you expand your rights to include the internet, then eventually the government will use that power to take rights away, even though that's incoherent completely. There well, is speaking literally of which, I'm pa speaking of which, I'm unironically parked. Would you mind refilling this with ice with, with tea? Thank you. Fawn is, uh, is still hanging out in here, actually. You just can't see. Sleeping on the floor? Okay. Let's continue. A way for expanding First Amendment rights on the internet to come back to bite us. Like, sure, maybe it makes life a little bit harder in Silicon Valley, but they'll adjust. Remember, they're innovators. They'll be just fine without deciding who gets to have an opinion. And you can do this at the state level right now. Just call what? your people, organize, put pressure on them. We'll put out a script at some point for all of these probably that you guys can use. We'll organize more in the future. But oh, totally. this is absolutely imperative. Yeah, we're going to do it next week, I promise. Imperative for our future success <laughs> because like we said, these platforms are the new public square and we are being targeted so severely that if we don't use what little power we have left to guarantee ourselves a seat at the table, then we're just going to be deleted from society and we will have no chance of turning the tide, let alone taking our country back. So we have to go after big tech, but we have to do so. All right, and and head on over to squattypotty.com for uh, John. Use the code John Doyle. Uh, this is the best way to shit and shoot at the same time. You need to have your squatty potty, my your eye laser squat pot, uh, in order to be able to shit and shoot at the same time. Wouldn't it be bad if the communists came while you were on the toilet? No more worries. Oh, with teeth, with balls, because that's all these people respond to. Force. We're the ones who will be placated by a performative. This guy literally just advocated for the use of force against anyone who disagrees with him, just so you know. Display that is ultimately inconsequential. Oh, we totally owned him by asking him that question. These companies need to be met with force or else we will all be screwed, blued, and tattooed. Did he just add, did he just literally, can we, can we just note that at 22:33 he specifically advocated using violent force against social media companies, including YouTube, which is a social media company at point at two, 22 minutes and 34 seconds into the five new conservative policies to take our country back. He explicitly stated that he believes that Republicans 
out and about random Republicans need to use force against social media companies. Again, 22 minutes and 34 seconds into, fi into five new conservative policies to take our country back by John Doyle. He advocates using force against YouTube and Facebook. Moving on to the second one, probably the most peculiar on the list, but just as important. We need to ban poison from being put in our bodies. Here's a fact I'm not sure if you know. On average, every week, you are ingesting one credit card's worth of plastic. Testosterone is down 40% in the last four decades. That's down 1% every year. Male sperm count is expected to reach zero by 2045. We're becoming this sick, confused... <laughs> Yes! You're gonna have zero sperms left! He only have a few years left to save the sperms! Quick, everybody! Listen, we have to save all the sperms, and the only way to save all the sperms is to deposit them into John Doyle's mouth! Quickly! Quickly! Quickly, put them in the bank! androgynous society and a large Thank part of you. that is the fact that we're ingesting microplastics bpas phthalates phytoestrogens etc etc everyone wants to point and I laugh haha ha, funny sweat man says frogs are gay no one wants to talk about the effects of atrazine on studies of south african claw frogs how it made them effeminate how it made the males start trying to mate with other males how it made them disinterested in the females no one wants to talk about that these chemicals, and there are lots of them, are used in your food packaging, in the plastics that you use to store your food, in the cups and bottles out of which you drink. They're in your shampoo. Everything is turning you gay. Everyone, stop using shampoo. Stop. Wait, now we know why he's so thirsty. He doesn't drink water because that turns you gay. Oh, my God. That's why he's so thirsty. We figured it out. Hey, Neil Moira, we're almost ready. We're going to finish this video, and then we'll be ready for the conversation in your toothpastes they're in the tap water stop they're brushing your teeth everybody the meats eggs milk they're getting into your system in more ways than we know and we need to outright ban them the great thing about the market breeding innovation is that when we ban things that disrupt the collective endocrine systems of the country that literally make men more feminine that are actively lowering their testosterone levels the good thing is that it'll just innovate a new solution that isn't altering our hormones but this is incredibly important Neo Moirai says, I enjoyed this dude's likely school shooter aesthetic. Listen, Neo Moirai, I understand where you're coming from, but uh, I'm just going to have to say he'd have to stop struggling to... He'd have to stop... Wow. He'd have to stop struggling with frequent masturbation in order to be able to pull off something like that. Important because disrupting your endocrine system makes you unstable. It makes you mentally ill, and it also makes you more feminine. All of these things make you more likely to support the left, to support the narratives, the systems of power in this country, all of it. If you want a free, prosperous, happy society, then you must understand that the mass alteration of your people's hormones is not conducive to that. It makes them weak, it makes them emotional, it makes them depressed, and it is evil. And arguably, that's why it's allowed to happen and why- Plastics are evil? Oh no! swept under the rug and this isn't a conspiracy theory by the way like literally just google it it's all publicly available information <laughs> do your own research folks this isn't a conspiracy theory all you need to do is search reptilians running the government on google and you'll find everything you need to know it's on the labels they don't even try to hide this it's just true and no one talks about it but anyways moving on to number three this one's probably going to be the most polarizing but it's just so true that is that we need an immigration moratorium for those unfamiliar an immigration moratorium means that we don't take in on the net any immigrants for a period of let's say 10 years before i explain why let me just preface by reminding you that immigration in the way that we have it now is the greatest gift and weapon that the left has ever been given the only reason that it is supported by the left is because they know that they can simply import voters to make the right electorally obsolete and unfortunately the right supports it too because they get paid off by big business uh because mass immigration depresses wages but anyways there is no no it doesn't even right-wing econom economists don't agree with you. You're wrong, buddy. You're objectively wrong. We've been through this one a million times. Even your own economists disagree with you. Literally too stupid to run a, run a country. Literally too stupid to run a country. It doesn't actually. Nothing wrong with opposing something because it will hurt you politically, especially because the only reason that they support it is because it will help them politically. And not only help them, but cement victory for them. And I'll probably- We've already won. We've already won, Doyle. We've already won. We had your guy for four years deporting the fuck out of everyone, and we won, resoundingly. You lost. You and your limp-wristed fucking orgasm denialism anti-jerker movement has failed 
and they will continue to fail. Is this my is this my clip? Is this it? Packaging in the plastics that you use to store your food in the cups and bottles out of which you drink, they're in your shampoo. Everything is turning you gay. Everyone, stop using shampoo. Stop. Wait, now we know why he's so thirsty. He doesn't drink water because that turns you gay. Oh my god, that's why he's so thirsty. We true. It out. We did. Hell yeah. So good good clip. Just good this clip. topic in the future. Let me know if you want to see that. But for now, what I'll say is this. Much of the immigration pitch in this country appeals to the Patriots' ego. And even Ronald Reagan was guilty of this. We hear this rhetoric. True silent. People just want to come to America because it's just the greatest country in the world. And it's yep. the land of opportunity. I knew that already. Like maybe we still are a great country. And I'm sure a lot of these immigrants who do come here, they absolutely believe that that's the case. And I love that. I sympathize with them. But unfortunately, yet obviously, we have to prioritize the needs of our country and our people. And the reality of the situation is that these immigrants are not assimilating and they're taking more money yes, out of the system. Yes, he was saying that before. But that, that was in a different video. The typical right Von line Yehub. is, well, I like legal immigration. What I don't like is illegal immigration. And then the elites are like, oh, I mean, okay, we'll just do it that way then. Think about it. What difference does it make if you get a thousand people from El Salvador, Somalia, wherever, you get a thousand of them at the border? What difference does it make if they run past the entrance or go through it? Seriously. Pissing and shitting himself over immigrants. Weak, weak, pathetic losers. What is the effective difference? A majority of both legal and illegal immigrant households are on welfare. So it seems that while there may be a lot of them who, you know, really just want to make it for themselves in this country, the majority of them seem to want to loot a decay. How, how do you get welfare if you're an illegal immigrant? I want to know how that works. I would love to know how that works. Empire undergoing its managed decline. Oh, but they help the GDP, John. The GDP, they help it. GDP, John. On paper, yeah, sure. How much of that benefits us, though? Ah! He's literally doing the math. Oh, your math is just. It's just. Oh, it's Jewish math. See, this is the problem. You might say it's good for the economy on paper, but that was. It was a Jewish paper. Because it's estimated that immigration, both legal and illegal, increases the GDP in this country by like 11%, like 1.6 trillion. Cool, right? Guess how much of that increase goes directly to the immigrants themselves in the form of wages and benefits, wages and benefits that Americans aren't getting. Fully 97.8%. GDP going up, supposed to benefit us, right? I mean, that's why you said it. No, total benefit is about two tenths of 1% of the GDP, about 35 billion. Oh, but John, when GDP increases, prices decrease. And I know this because Henry Hazlitt told me so in 1946. Okay, cool, irrelevant. I'll tell you why right now. What? But first, just in terms internalize that there is very little evidence uh, that indicates or suggests that immigration in any form is a substantial benefit to the American people. But that aside, here's why economic arguments about immigration are irrelevant. 19 out of 20 illegal immigrants will vote for Democrats. 9 out of 10 legal immigrants will vote for Democrats. This is a fact. We'll have a problem. Have you considered that maybe people come from other countries and then they see people like you and they go, what the fuck is wrong with these people? What the fuck is wrong with the Republicans? You people are insane. And then they vote for Democrats because Democrats are like significantly less insane than people like you. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that might be the reason why like immigrants come here and then they go, oh my God, what is wrong with those people? Problem when liberals move from California to Texas, but they keep voting for the same policies that ruined where they came from in the first place. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen here? Do you think that they're going to totally abandon their culture? I'm sorry, do you think, do you Somalia, think do you think Somalia is like a leftist paradise? Do you think Guatemala is like a like a leftist paradise? Like what what is this guy talking about? Going to get a white picket fence and and start Oh, they come here and vote in the laws they did in their country. In Somalia? It was Somalia like a, a thriving communist empire? Like is that reading Thomas Paine and John Stuart Mill in the Federalist Papers? Well, I'm okay with immigrants as long as they assimilate. They're not assimilating. They don't want to assimilate. Dude, you aren't assimilating. What are you talking about? You literally, this is what, this is the thing that drives me nuts about people like John Doyle. John Doyle has spent this entire time talking about how he doesn't belong in the modern era. The modern era is, is too, is too gay and whatever for him. You're not assimilating, dude. You can't even keep up with your own country. What are you fucking talking about? Well, but my family literally nonsense. And we're just actual That's nonsense. I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I'm All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I've had enough. I can't do any more John Doyle. I'm sorry. I can't. We're out of time anyway. I don't. I don't care. I don't even care what his other stupid policies are. We listened to 27 minutes of John Doyle. Enough is enough. Okay. Enough is enough.
We've had enough. John Doyle is a pathetic loser coomer who will continue losing for the rest of his life. He will most likely shrivel up and turn into a, a, a lonely, sad, and pathetic, and hateful old man. And then... He will, the, the dehydration will finally catch up with him. All of this is going to happen in the next three days because he hasn't drank water for four days. So he's going to shrivel up into an old man and then pass away from dehydration within a day or two is my guess.